This is a recording taken from the webinars we held on the 4th and 5th of May 2020. These webinars were funded by Clarion Futures and focused on well-being and ways to cope with lockdown and social distancing measures. As part of Mental Health Awareness Week, we wanted to make these more broadly available in the hope that they'll help more people maintain better well-being during this time. First, we'll hear from one of our trainers, Jay Gardia, who will take us through the main webinar. Then another of our talented trainers, Paul Croston, will leave us with some closing thoughts on managing our mental health. We hope you find this webinar useful. Hello, good morning. Uh, welcome to this webinar on uh, mental well-being and coping with social distancing. So the session itself uh, will run for around about 40 minutes or so. And let's make a start. We're going to go through some things that probably are things that are, are, are quite nice reminders, but also I'm hoping there'll be some uh, nice hints and tips in here uh, that could help lead you in the, di in, the, in the right, kind of, guide you in the right kind of direction uh, with some good basic elements for good well-being. So in the session then we will uh, cover what we're going to cover is we're going to look at connecting with others so we're going to look at some uh, digital platforms uh, that you can use to be able to connect with other people in these very strange times that we're currently going through we'll also then look at keeping active and look at some physical well-being uh, in terms of what kind of things you could be getting on with what kind of resources we could uh, link you to and what kind of things could be uh, worth looking into whilst uh, social distancing uh, is currently ongoing we'll then look uh, thirdly at looking at your own well-being uh, and mental well-being so we're going to kind of tie in the two kind of areas of your physical health and your mental health and look at uh, ways of being able to manage that but also some some uh, some nudges in the right direction and last and finally, we'll do some resources and some support. So in terms of that, uh, there'll be some uh, a bit of a wrap up in terms of what kind of things can be available. But also at the end of the webinar, uh, you'll be sent uh, a crib sheet, which uh, is just a, a resource or a signposting sheet, which will have everything that we've discussed throughout the webinar. And we'll also have uh, lots of links, uh, websites um, and uh, uh, apps and things like that that you can uh, link into. So really, this is just about good basic elements that feed into your well-being and your mental well-being whilst uh, these very strange times are currently ongoing. So it's not really about a one-size-fits-all approach. If it was uh, a magical, um, you know, uh, one-size-fits-all approach and there was a, a formula to good well-being throughout, uh, throughout, throughout this time and any other, in fact, um, it would be a very easy process. So this is really about just nudging in the right direction, reminding you that... Um, that there may be uh, suggestions and that's exactly what they are. They're just suggestions and they're just a bit of a, a springboard to lead you in the right kind of direction. It's not meant to be prescriptive or exhaustive. It's, it is only a, a, a quick kind of half an hour, 40 minutes worth uh, to be able to put you in the right kind of direction. And then you can choose what you uh, what choose to implement and what you want to um, kind of take forward from the, from the webinar. So let's make a start then. So in terms of digital connections, uh, in this section, really, uh, it may well be that you've already got uh, access to quite a lot of these social media platforms, but it's nice to have a bit of a run through of what they are. So, of course, uh, you may well already be linked to these, but what we'll do is introduce what they are and also kind of talk about maybe some of the extra elements and the other bits and pieces that you could link to it or connect to it uh, to be able to get the best from them. So, of course, Facebook, uh, we'll talk about WhatsApp. Uh, we'll then talk about YouTube, and we'll go into these in a, a little bit more detail. Uh, we'll then talk about Instagram, and uh, I think the newest kid on the block uh, here is House Party, so we'll have a look at that. And like I say, this is not um, an exhaustive list of digital platforms you can use. Uh, these are just a selection um, to kind of push you in the right kind of direction, and there's several others out there, and they're worth looking into. So in terms of Facebook, uh, it's a, a social networking website. Uh, I, I'm, I'm guessing possibly that you've already got access to. If you haven't, uh, when we send out the, um, the signposting sheet at the end, there'll be a link on there that you can click to be able to join it should you wish to. So it's a social net uh, networking website uh, where users can post comments, share photographs, post links, and uh, links to news 
uh, and other uh, content of interest for you. Uh, you can also chat live and watch short form videos on there. So the thing that's probably worth keeping an eye on uh, in terms of Facebook is um, not just kind of linking with friends and uh, people that you do know in the real world, um, but also about uh, interest groups that can be joined. Um, it may be worth looking for uh, community groups, because often in whatever area you may well be, uh, I'm unsure as to whether you're in kind of the Leeds or the West Yorkshire area, um, there's uh, often uh, kind of social community groups for your district or your area. Um, and often there's quite a lot of uh, local interest information on there. And it's, it's worth having a look um, as to, is there one that you could join? Just making sure that, of course, it's a reliable source and it's not um, anything that, obviously they have their, their ways of being able to manage what content goes on there, do uh, the social media platforms. But just making sure that it's not uh, that it's from a reliable source and not scaremongering and things like that. So have a look for uh, local and community groups uh, that might be worth looking on there. And also, uh, as an add-on to Facebook, there's the uh, messenger function, which means that you can uh, message uh, people who are on there and to the groups and things like that. So leading from that into WhatsApp, uh, which is a messaging platform. It's free. Uh, it's a download uh, and you can link that from your smartphones and your laptop. Uh, what, uh, WhatsApp uses the internet to be able to kind of cover what used to be in the old, dark old days, text messaging. So it's a free version of being able to message people. Uh, you can share images, uh, memes, audio, video, all that kind of thing. Again, you can join groups uh, on here and create message boards. Uh, you can, it, it's possibly worth perhaps uh, setting up your own groups because you can do like your own WhatsApp private groups um, and chat message boards and chat rooms and things like that. Uh, is there a neighborhood group you could possibly look into setting up? I don't know how well you know your neighbors and people around you. It's possibly something to have a look at. Uh, and the person who sets up the WhatsApp group becomes the admin. But of course, you can add other people in to become admins too. But if you're the person that sets it up, you, you're kind of almost uh, the person that takes um, the lead on it, I guess. And uh, you would be the admin and you can add other people should you require it. Thirdly then, uh, I'm sure you're fully aware or know of uh, YouTube. Again, uh, it's, it's uh, something that a lot of people have got access to. Uh, it's a video sharing platform um, where users can watch, like, share, comment, and upload your own content uh, if you want to. Uh, although you, know, you don't have to upload your own content, it can just be that you are uh, searching and observing. It's a video service that you can access on your PC, your laptop, tablets if you have one. And of course, onto you, on your mobile phone. Um, it, again, it's kind of really making sure that whatever you do search on there, um, that it's reliable and it's reputable. Um, there's lots of uh, organizations, mental health charities, um, well-being charities that have got their own uh, channels that are on there. Uh, and if you're interested in those, uh, it's worth subscribing to them because then that will then uh, send you the information and it kind of almost um, ring fences and you're, you're not having to sit there doing all the searching. Once you've subscribed to someone's channel, you will then get that sent into your feed. So it does a little bit of the work for you. Uh, it's worth having a look for things during these uh, times of lockdown uh, in terms of activities, cooking, uh, food stuff that's on there, crafts, art stuff, um, music, if you're interested in, in kind of music videos and things like that, uh, exercise, and there's several tutorials on there, uh, even things like DIY, considering most people are now stuck inside their own houses. So. Uh, there's lots of tutorials on there and uh, on kind of doing some stuff in the house, maybe keeping you occupied and things like that. Fourthly then in this section, uh, Instagram, of course. Um, again, it may well be that you already have this, but this is a, uh, a social uh, networking app made for sharing photographs um, and videos onto, um, from a smartphone. You can download the app by searching for Instagram in your app store or on your Android platform. Uh, and it's not only individuals that you can follow on here, you can also follow and use the hashtag. So what that means is if you're interested in something, um, and rather than following a, an individual, you can just go hashtag whatever it might be and follow the hashtag. So whenever someone uses that, that means that you will then get that sent into your feed. So you kind of, you could put in a whole bunch of your own interests and things that you like and music and uh, art and creative stuff or whatever it might be. Uh, and it will then do the little, a little bit of the work for you to put that into your feed. Uh, and you can also add your own content, of course. Um, 
pictures mostly, uh, and there is short form video and kind of things on loop that you can put onto there. Last and finally then in this section is digital connections um, in terms of house party. So this is a, a, a relatively new one. I think it's maybe taken a real springboard um, just during these times of uh, uh, a lockdown. So um, it's a social network um, app that you can add onto your phone where you can video in inverted commas meet with your friends and family. So whoever's on there, you can then have um, a, like almost like a video conference. Um, but rather than it just be having, you know, uh, catch ups and chit chat, uh, there's all sorts of games and quizzes and activities and all sorts that you can uh, do on there. Uh, and it's proven quite popular uh, in these times. You can also set up uh, on here, ensuring that again, kind of making sure it's reputable and making sure you're only adding people that you know. Um, there's a bunch of security features on there that you can kind of almost um, lock the room that you're in. So that means that no one else can access it. So you're just talking to the people that you want to be there. Uh, and you can also put your privacy settings and security settings on there, which means um, you can tell or not tell when you are on there or other people know when you're in uh, in the app uh, and set up other groups and uh, things within uh, the app itself um, for notifications and things like that. So all of those um, will have, when we send out the uh, signposting sheet, we'll have all the details of all of those, plus the links to get to them and a little bit of extra information on those. So that's really the kind of the digital connection section of the webinar. Moving and uh, moving on then, sorry, <clears throat> onto other ways of communicating. So again, in any of those digital platforms, it's it's worth making sure that you're keeping safe online with any of those online platforms, because obviously people are using a lot more online platforms now more than they ever have done, um, purely because of the the no contact really or, or not going out as uh, out and about as much. So just really thinking about that uh, online safety and making sure that the, the precautions are kind of in place. So other things that you can consider, things like FaceTiming uh, and video messaging with your friends and family, because um, it's quite nice to be able to make those calls and, and have that contact for you, but also encouraging the people that you are contacting to do the same back for you. So you're kind of almost reciprocating um, good um, checking in um, practices, I guess. Uh, emailing, of course, uh, people, uh, text messaging on your phones, but also kind of even going um, old school and going traditional letter writing, um, you know, starting almost like a pal, uh, pen pal system, um, maybe like we did when we were much younger before the, uh, the age of the internet, but it's quite nice and there's nothing that beats a handwritten letter. Um, and it's actually a lovely thing to receive. Um, and also once you've maybe done some letters and had some received and you've sent some out, um, it's quite a nice way of documenting um, these, these times currently. And it's quite a nice keepsake. So those are the ways of communicating. Again, they're probably just a, a, a bit of a polish of what you're already um, using, but it's quite nice to be able to uh, encourage that, not just uh, all the work and the ownership coming from you, but also other people uh, doing it too, I forget. So in terms of your community, again, keeping appropriate distance um, is obviously important and making sure that that's been focused on, uh, but keeping in mind that, um, that you're keeping within those recommended distances, most supermarkets and most public spaces that, you, that are still open um, have gone ahead and put the floor stickers on. So, you know, it's just keeping those kind of distances and uh, keeping yourself safe and keeping other people safe. Uh, lots of people in terms of their own communities and their block of flats or their street or wherever, whoever uh, happens to be around them are um, kind of starting street projects and art projects. Uh, I don't know if your parents or have young ones uh, to be able to encourage them to contribute in any way that you see fit, um, decorating the windows, and especially when you're, uh, we'll come to it a little bit later in terms of physical exercise and going out for your, your walks and stuff, it's quite nice to be able to see what people have put in their windows, it's quite heartwarming actually. Um, so getting involved in kind of street projects and uh, things within your community, of course keeping uh, social distance, but um, lots of people are getting involved in kind of the window decoration and keeping uh, and, and making sure that people know that, that that's happening and it's quite nice. Leading from that, in terms of your community then, <clears throat> uh, neighbourhood groups have been set up, concerts, I'm sure uh, you perhaps have seen it on uh, social media where people have uh, recorded what they've uh, managed to get done in their communities and their, with their neighbours, singing, dance contests, um, everything from the, the comfort of your own doorstep. Again, uh, making sure that you're keeping some level of distance. 
Um, com uh, community initiatives are being set up. And of course, uh, remembering that the Thursday at eight o'clock um, clap for carers and NHS applause uh, happens, which is quite a nice way of being able to connect with your neighbours. So uh, get your pot pots and pans and a wooden spoon and get out there and uh, be, uh, be able to say thanks for uh, the people who are keeping us going currently in the NHS being massively important in terms of that and key workers and people who are working in supermarkets and things like that. So uh, that's definitely something to consider and kind of keep yourself linked in. If you're using those some of those uh, digital platforms, perhaps trying to find a way of being able to get numbers from people who are around you, uh, and that can then kind of keep your sense of community, and it's quite nice to be able to to be able to do that. Um, possibly people are having more contact with the people who are, you know, spitting distance of their own houses more than um, ever before. So it's 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 a nice thing to be able to look into. So that really covers uh, kind of digital platforms and things that are kind of in inverted commas. Uh, face to face, and by that I mean kind of people who are physically around you, but obviously at, uh, at the recommended uh, distances and things like that. So moving nicely from that into uh, from community into your own physical health. So this is really to split it into two key sections in terms of your physical exercise, indoors or outdoors, of course, and mental exercise in terms of uh, keeping a curious and an active mind, and how these two things really do sit very closely together. Uh, and kind of go hand in hand and feed off each other, if that makes sense. So in terms of physical exercise, uh, it's recommended for at least 30 minutes a day, and it's whatever is the right type of physical activity for you, and we're gonna go through some of that. So no one's expecting anyone to be an Olympian or to be Usain Bolt or anything like that. Uh, it's really just about if, making sure that you're doing, even if it's a couple of runs around the block or a walk around the block, for around 30 minutes each day is massively recommended uh, and it definitely helps. So it includes, as, as well as physical exercise, mental exercise as well. So it's really very important to keep your mind stimulated and active whilst you're uh, with us as well as our, our physical activity. Um, and in terms of sometimes that men, uh, mindfulness um, or mindfully active, it's the one that often gets forgotten uh, and really making sure that we're kind of focusing on stuff like that because it's, it's really very important, especially when we're locked in these four walls uh, a lot of the time for a lot of people. So the well-being of your mind and the well-being of your body, like we say, is uh, it, they feed into each other and they're connected in lots and lots of different ways. So the science behind it says that if you have a healthy body, i.e. you're physically active, and you have a healthy mind, i.e. you're mentally active, it can help your overall um, well-being uh, holistically. The NHS uh, and the information and the statistics that are out there state that if you are physically active on a regular basis, you can actually reduce the risk of major illnesses, things like heart disease, stroke, uh, type 2 diabetes, and even many types of cancer. Uh, activity is not necessarily the cure, but it's really about the, those two things working in conjunction with, the, with each other to be more um, paving the path for prevention and kind of having both of those two things focused on. And, and focused on in the way that you, you see fit, uh, fit and best. Um, like I say, the research and the evidence demonstrate that physical activity can help reduce, uh, manage symptoms of stress and anxiety, depression, and even low mood. Um, and all of those things have kind of, for a lot of people these days, have spiked a little purely because of the, the current circumstances and the state of the world. Uh, and a lot of people feel quite kind of um, stressed and anxious with the circumstances and it, it changes on a daily basis. So making sure that you're doing these things can help boost your self-esteem, your self-confidence, um, and it can also help feel that, uh, create that kind of feel-good factor about yourself. It can help improve your sleep, which in turn then helps you think and feel uh, and be more productive and be better uh, in your day-to-day. -day. And we've all, uh, I'm sure, had two or three nights of poor sleep, and that massively impacts us. We're really not very nice humans when we've not had great sleep. So kind of tying those things in are absolutely important. Uh, in terms of um, resilience and kind of working through these kind of things, we're going to go through a couple of things that might be of use for you and some resources that might be useful. Uh, in terms of the um, equipment, people have kind of got themselves maybe a little bit uh, stuck in a corner in terms of, well, I'd love to do some activity, but I don't have the equipment. Um, there are lots of people currently selling um, lots of physical activity equipment and weights and gym equipment and kind of at home exercise stuff currently because with lots of people being at home, that's meant lots of people are doing lots of clearing out. And because charity shops aren't taking any donation, donations, they're ending up uh, sticking them online. 
Uh, like we mentioned, Facebook, that now has a marketplace, which is basically their version of eBay. I think they're just trying to cover that market. Uh, it's worth having a look and putting the distance down as maybe a few miles from your own home. Uh, and you can see that, you know, perhaps there's uh, someone who's uh, selling some equipment or even giving it away for free. Uh, people are putting it on marketplace as collection only and they can leave it at the bottom of the garden gate so you can collect it uh, at a social distance. Uh, if all else fails and you're not able to grab any equipment or get a, a free equipment or anything like that, um, have a look at, get creative, have a look around the house, see if there's anything that you could um, repurpose or use. I mean, a friend of mine, uh, for example, I saw a couple of days ago, post a video of them um, doing free weights in the garden with cans of uh, uh, Dulux uh, tins of paint with a broom handle. So they basically made their own weights. So perhaps if, uh, if all else fails and you're not able to blag some free stuff, then maybe you could uh, <laughs> make your own weights and cans of beans as weights or whatever it might be, who knows? You know, if you look at it with a fresh pair of eyes, you never know, you might have a whole bunch of new things. You might even get a whole gym kitted out with stuff that's already in the house. So in terms of exercise then uh, and physical activity, if there's chair-based exercise, it's really about what works best for you. Uh, so there's chair-based exercise, chair um, Pilates and things like that. YouTube often have lots of videos and uh, tutorials and things like that. Uh, so no one's asking you to be, you know, sprinting up hills and, uh, you know, doing uh, 26 mile runs or anything like that. So it's worth having a look. If you're interested, I don't know if you know already, uh, Joe Wicks is doing the, uh, well, he's become the nation's PE teacher. So he's doing that uh, in the mornings every day. So that could be something if you're, if you're interested. Uh, for some people, it's um, very mild, very gentle exercise. As long as you're doing 30 minutes or so a day, you're kind of ticking the boxes, really. Uh, so... If it's a case of just uh, running up and down the stairs for a couple of, you know, a couple of times, numerous times even. Um, so really it's about uh, the majority will be somewhere in between. So it's not going to be, you know, vastly, massively physical, uh, physical activity. Sorry. It could well be that it's quite gentle, even if it's a couple of walks around the block or anything like that. Um, really, it's kind of once you've got yourself into a routine with this kind of stuff, I found from a personal perspective, it just becomes part of your routine and you end up looking forward to it. I, th I don't think I'd ever in a million years think I'd say that. Uh, I thought I'd ever say that, but once you've got yourself into a routine with this kind of thing, you do end up looking forward to it because the, the payoff is once you've done a little bit of it, you feel wonderful afterwards and you never regret it. So uh, rather than it be seen as a, as a chore, it's more a, actually this is just part of your normal day-to-day -day routine and it breaks up your day and you're doing something constructive and productive and you might feel those endorphins flying around, which are always good for your well-being, I'm sure. So in terms of uh, other types of physical activity, like we say, we've mentioned a fair number of them. So chair-based Pilates is, is, um, and yoga and things like that are uh, video tutorials you can definitely have a look for online. Squats and lunges, of course, would sit in here. Uh, walk, jog, uh, or a combination of all of those. Again, it's a, it's a work in progress and kind of working yourself up to a point where it's comfortable for you. Um, even having a, a dance around the house um, uh, or go, to, you know, there's... Um, Strictly um, are doing tutorials on a whole bunch of different steps and routines and things like that. Uh, I don't know if your parents and you've got kids that are young enough, perhaps it could be that you all have a bit of a, a dance about in the lounge. Um, always good for well-being. It could be a bit of a giggle. Um, and I know it probably could be someone, some, some of our versions of absolute hell, but <laughs> running around the house with the vacuum cleaner um, or doing a bit of cleaning or just kind of clearing one cupboard out at a time or you know, all that kind of stuff could well be that actually still counts as physical activity if we're doing it at a point where uh, when we're doing a bit of movement and uh, moving about a little bit. Again, like I say, these are all just suggestions, but even, you know, these kind of suggestions here could, it's really about making it fun and either you, it yourself or with the neighbours at a social distance or with the kids um, or dancing around your own gardens to the same song, as if everyone's got it on the same <laughs> WhatsApp group, I've seen people do that. As long as you're doing a bit of bending and a bit of stretching and getting your heart rate going a little bit, it's, it's, uh, it's all good. So in terms of the flip side then, so we've talked about physical activity, mental activity, so it's really important to make sure that you are stimulating your mental capacity and things like that. Uh, again, it's not about doing a degree whilst we're in lockdown. It's about actually just like physical exercise, it's a good idea to have a range of things uh, which could kind of stimulate you. Brilliant podcasts that are available currently, lots of free ones. 
Um, audio books even, again, lots of free ones of those uh, available on uh, YouTube. If you want to pay for things like uh, Audible, I think it's seven or eight pounds a month, but then you're gonna get lots and lots and lots of material that you can make use of if you think you're going to and make, the, make it worth uh, the money. Those books that have been gathering dust on a bookshelf somewhere, maybe they were, they're worth picking up. Um, so, you know, boredom is the thing to kind of really counter here, and it's crept up on a lot of people because of obviously being kind of stuck in, uh, in our four walls. So it's important to keep that kind of mental stimulation going. For example, uh, reading or listening or playing music, crosswords, puzzles, uh, things like that. Sudoku, I never know how to pronounce that. Uh, so yeah, that, <laughs> uh, crosswords and puzzles. Um, uh, music, if, whether it's just listening to it, watching, even playing, depending on you know, how talented you are. Uh, learning something new. There's always a, a YouTube tutorial on how to learn something new or a craft idea or something to uh, get cracking with. I'm sure there's lots of things you can find around the house to be able to, to do that. Uh, puzzles and card games we've talked about. And online quizzes are cropping up all over the place currently. Um, you can jump on things like uh, platforms like Zoom, if you, if you know about that. Uh, and it's all, it's essentially just video conferencing. Uh, you can jump onto those. Uh, in terms of tutorials, WikiHow is very good uh, in terms of tutorials. Uh, and there's, um, let's have a look. Yeah, so there's lots of uh, tutorials in terms of uh, that, but also uh, because we're stuck in our own houses, uh, perhaps it's even things like DIY uh, that you could uh, get a tutorial on or you know, kind of spruce things up around the house. So again, it tends to be uh, things that are kind of just keeping you mentally stimulated. Um, plant something. Uh, whether you live in a flat or a house, it could be that you get a bit interested in house plants. Um, because tending to something living is, um, is really very good for your well-being and kind of nurturing something and watching something grow. Uh, so house plants uh, are a great idea. Uh, next time you're at the supermarket, go and have a little look in the florist section. They're often selling uh, quite nice house plants for not a huge amount of money at all, a few pounds at best. Uh, so there's lots of choice uh, for not a huge amount of money and be able to kind of watch something grow and, and nurture it and that kind of thing. So in terms of rather than having a whole list of things to do, it's, the, it's really kind of keeping uh, an idea on the opposite and kind of stilling and quieting your mind and uh, maybe mindfulness practices and making sure that you're taking a bit of time out just to let your brain rest and recover. So a quiet mind is a still mind, a still mind is an untroubled mind. An untroubled mind is a peaceful mind, a peaceful, a peaceful mind is a happy mind. So just learning how to quieten your thoughts. No one's expecting you to live on a Zen cloud somewhere uh, without any sort of concern or worry. Of course, these are quite worrying times, but it's just about being really mindful of what can I control, what can't I, and am I doing things for my own well-being and uh, for the well-being of other people around me, um, depending on obviously who's in your household in terms of partner, children, things like that. But also uh, maybe making sure that you're taking a little bit of time out for yourself and um, kind of taking out some of the, the mental, taking out the mental rubbish uh, and popping it outside. So uh, it's, it's completely normal, it's perfectly normal to feel a little bit anxious, but um, kind of just maybe looking at some of these mindfulness practices. Um, Headspace is a really good one to be able to kind of um, learn breathing techniques and mindfulness and things like that. That's definitely worth a look if you are interested. So in terms of how all those things kind of tie together, uh, it really fits to uh, what's really, you know, what is helpful for your well-being. So breathing exercises, like we say, apps are useful. Tutorials on YouTube are useful. Uh, joining groups on WhatsApp and things like that are definitely useful. Like we mentioned earlier, getting good sleep uh, and getting your kind of sleep routines. It has a massive impact on us with, uh, in terms of sleep deprivation. I know, of course, getting good quality regular sleep is massively um, conducive to your own well-being. Uh, and maybe kind of some hints and tips as to getting better sleep. Uh, Calm is a very good app um, with kind of sleep cycle uh, stuff if you're interested. If you have a smartphone to be able to, to download that, I'm sure there's a, a free version of that one. Uh, nutrition, of course, uh, the five a day, uh, making sure that you're getting kind of fresh food and fresh veg and things like that. Um, the supermarkets now tend to have uh, settled down a little bit and it's not uh, panic buying and things like that any longer. So making sure that you are uh, kind of eating well 
and kind of keeping your natural routines uh, in terms of, you know, breakfast, lunch and tea and things like that. Um, of course, you know, it stands to reason if you put in rubbish fuel into your body, it's going to end up um, not giving you the results you want. It's like putting diesel into a petrol car, fill the tank with diesel on a petrol car. You're not going to get very far because it's just going to make you sluggish and groggy and not uh, a very nice human. So it's, it's worth kind of keeping a mindful eye on that kind of thing. Again, like in terms of nutrition, ties into it in terms of hydration. So I think we're all guilty of not drinking enough water of a day. Uh, so uh, making sure that you're hydrated uh, and often it's thirst that your body's kind of giving you messages about before it's even hunger. Um, and I think all of us have probably been guilty of, of uh, <laughs> eating a lot more snacks and things like that whilst we're in lockdown. Uh, when often you, the message your, your body's giving you is that it's thirst um, rather than uh, hunger it's usually thirst first uh, so every day it can, we can possibly have uh, negative and unhelpful things going on um, and occasionally that might uh, be a range of things but it's mind it's just keeping a mindful eye on these kind of things to be able to um, to kind of make, make them part of your natural routines and again it's a little bit of practice with them and kind of consciously doing it if you're the kind of person that needs reminders like me um, stick them in your phone and then you'll get a little reminder or a, a little bleep to say, do you know what, it's been two hours since you've had a glass of water and kind of nudging you in the right kind of direction until your routines are kind of become natural patterns for you. Uh, and reframing unhelpful thoughts. Again, kind of, you know, it is a vicious cycle and trying to reframe those could help kind of uh, un unpick it a little bit because we can, we're all, I'm sure, guilty of uh, not, um, not having the, the most positive or productive thought patterns, but it's just reframing those and thinking, what's the worst case here? What can I do something about this? If I can't, then what can I, what can I do? And, and, and that kind of thing. So in terms of uh, all of the things that we've talked about so far, really kind of rounds up in terms of your physical health and your mental health that then ties into uh, your social kind of stuff, um, kind of feeding into it. And that's really the health triangle. It's the opposite side if we're struggling with our well-being. Um, that we might see the negative impact and kind of focus on those negatives. Um, and I'm sure we've all uh, been guilty of that. <clears throat> but there is, um, there is hope and uh, there's way, small changes in that area, in any one of these areas, sorry, uh, can positively impact uh, your well-being and vice versa. Uh, and being able to be kind of confident enough to be able to talk about it and to be able to say it out loud that actually I'm not feeling so great today. What do I need to do to be able to manage that? and uh, having the heads up with people around us to be able to do that too. So I hope that helps in terms of uh, physical and mental health and kind of how that ties into um, good well-being during these times. So leading from that nicely uh, is uh, some signposting and kind of some heads up as to what's available. Uh, whether you're here in the city of Leeds or kind of further afield, um, there are several uh, um, options and things to be able to kind of keep a mindful eye on should you need to use this. Um, Mindwell, I don't know if you're aware of Mindwell, uh, it is a Leeds based thing, uh, but it's essentially a one stop shop hub uh, for mental well being and mental health support and resources across the city. Uh, it's not just uh, Leeds based resources, there's a lot of obviously Leeds uh, based resources, that's the website there. But this is a, a one stop shop hub of all mental health and uh, support and resources that are in the uh, city and further afield. There's national resources on there too. So, this is a little bit of a heads up as to what the front page of the website looks like. So, it's pretty straightforward in terms of are you looking for resources for yourself? Have you got concerns about another individual? Or are you a professional that's uh, trying to find information? There's even up in the top right, if you have a look, um, if, if actually perhaps you need. Um, immediate help at this time, uh, which could well be the case. So speaking of which, um, it's perfectly normal uh, during these very difficult times, as we've mentioned before, um, to have uh, to experience anxiety or low mood in these unprecedented times. So support is available should you need it. 111 is worth a call if you think you're really struggling and you do need uh, NHS advice in terms of what is available and what you can do and how to manage that. Um, it's really what uh, by calling 111 they can assess as to how um how severe it is uh, per, uh, perhaps and what kind of uh, support is available to you based on kind of their criteria 
Uh, but if you feel like you really are struggling or someone else around you really is struggling, uh, as we said earlier, um, go onto the MindWell website and you can click the uh, explore the section for concerned about someone else rather than yourself. Or of course, uh, click the correct section if it's actually yourself that uh, would like that kind of support. So in terms of uh, financial support then, um, kind of tying into this, because this is kind of all the, all, all the things that are kind of a bit of a, a point of pain for quite a lot of people uh, and a bit of a thorn in the side, especially in these difficult uh, circumstances. Um, it's massively important that you continue to pay kind of things like rent and your other financial commitments so that it doesn't cause any problems for you going forward. Things like, if I don't know if you're aware, uh, something called Money Buddies and Step Change, they're uh, financial support uh, organizations and groups that are uh, in the city. They're now doing, <clears throat> excuse me, they're doing, uh, um, they're doing um, telephone consultations uh, now, obviously, with uh, no real social contact with anyone, but anyone inf impacted by this. The other thing that is possibly worth considering, uh, if you think it might be useful to you, is welfare rights uh, and having a look at what um, support or extra finances or extra financial support might be available. So things like statutory sick pay, depending on your circumstances, whether you're still working from home or furloughed or whatever it might be. Um, having a look at universal credit and uh, contributory uh, ESA and things like that. So in terms of well-being in your family then, uh, this, like I say, is not a, a, an exhaustive um, list of things, but kind of if you think about the wider circle, uh, if you are uh, someone that's living in a household currently with a uh, partner and uh, partners and children and things like that, you're probably all spending a lot more time together than you ever have done before, which is probably causing quite a lot of distress for a lot of people. So in terms of making sure there's well-being in your family, um, checking in with each other is really useful, depending on uh, obviously the age of the children, but you know, especially with your partners, because you're probably living in each other's pockets uh, a lot more now than you ever have done before. So just checking in with each other is, is definitely worth doing. Uh, it's always nice to be asked how we're feeling and giving a truthful answer to that too. Uh, scheduling family time to relax, um, that you can, something that you can all do together. Again, lots of hints and tips on social media platforms and things like that. Uh, staying in touch with each other. Um, I don't know if you've got children and whether they're teens and often, uh, even in the same household, you could feel like you all live in separate rooms. Um, and that's often the way uh, these days. So even texting each other when you're in different rooms can make a, a bit of a difference and just checking in with each other. Don't be afraid to talk about uh, how you're feeling and your well-being uh, and your well-being needs openly. It's really important that you do. Uh, by doing it, you kind of almost set the, the set the standards and set the precedent that this is an okay thing to do. Uh, and by doing it, you then kind of nudge other people around you, other individuals around you to, to do the same. Be patient and support uh, each other and genuinely listen to each other. Um, this is a, a, a cracking opportunity to really um, get to communicate with each other. Uh, be a positive role model in terms of practicing self-care. Uh, by doing it, you become the, the advocate, I guess, by making sure that if you're doing um, pra uh, practicing good self-care and, and kind of looking out for your well-being, you're essentially encouraging other people to do it uh, around you. So therefore, you're leading by example. Um, we think in this country often that uh, it's a very British trait, I think, that self-care is selfish. And that's not true it's not selfish to have uh, to make sure that you're looking after your own uh, well-being and self-care it's actually uh, massively useful and we don't tend to do enough of it and last and finally and it shouldn't really be the the last uh, one but making sure that as much as there's other individuals perhaps that are around you really focusing on um carving out some time and ring fen ring fencing some time for you and having some you time uh, again by doing that you're leading by example which then uh, domino effects to everyone else around you. So I hope that's okay in terms of well-being in your family. So what I would like to do then to kind of tail everything off in terms of the webinar is go through your well-being five a day. I'm sure you're fully aware of the, uh, the fruit and veg five a day. So what I've gone ahead and done is done a well-being version of that. So it splits itself nicely into a bunch of sections, pie pieces. Uh, in terms of, I'll go through a little bit more in detail at each one of these sections, you time, uh, contact with others, exercise that we've touched on, nutrition, and good sleep. So the first section then, you time, making sure that you uh, do carve some time for yourself and 
and, and make sure you do have a little bit of kind of respite from the things around us, if it, whether it's partners, children, the news, uh, you know, screens, anything like that. So perhaps consider things like uh, get, you know, have some reading time, uh, get that book up that's gathering dust on the shelf, uh, having a bath, uh, going for a walk, just having a bit of time out just to kind of reflect and gather your thoughts and, and be able to look after you because it's massively important. Secondly, contact, it kind of ties into everything that we've talked about really in terms of uh, FaceTime, Skype, phone calls, things like that. Uh, texting um, people, connecting with other people and reaching out to the other, other creatures around you. Uh, of course, at a social distance level uh, and distance that's been recommended. Thirdly then, kind of tying in really and wrapping up and rounding up really what we've talked about in terms of uh, exercise, getting out at least once a day if you can. Uh, for at least 30 minutes uh, is recommended. If you're concerned about contact with others, which quite a lot of people kind of are in you know, busy times of the day, how about possibly getting out for that walk or that run or uh, a couple of spins around the block early hours uh, as, the, as the day breaks or really late in the, you know, kind of later on in the evening where maybe you're not gonna get as many kind of daytime crowds. Um, uh, for me personally, um, I'm a morning person, so I'm, having my, uh, my 30 minute, 45 minute walk uh, at kind of 6, 6.30. For some people that would be pure hell, <laughs> but uh, it's just got to, be, it's got to be what's right for you and really kind of focusing on things that you are gonna, not gonna cause you distress and gonna uh, work for you, I guess. If you don't feel comfortable going outside or have mobility issues, things like that, um, there's lots of online videos we talked about and lots of free movement classes um, and things like that and lots of chair-based exercise and kind of quite gentle exercise that you could be doing in the house uh, that's worth learning. Uh, and there's lots of those links and resources on the details we'll send out later on. But ultimately then, nutrition, it's really important uh, to eat well and stay hydrated. Uh, drink plenty of food, uh, water, fluids, eat some good nutritious foods, like I said, the right fuel in gives you the right results out. And perhaps challenge yourself to learn something new in terms of cooking, perhaps, I don't know. Uh, there's a uh, a couple of friends of mine who are doing kind of store cupboard roulette. So they pick out a whole bunch of things that are in their cupboards. And then the people who are in their WhatsApp group are telling them what they could do with that. And then they share the pictures. So it turns it into a, a bit of a, an activity and a, uh, something to focus on and quite a nice new skill to have, I guess. Uh, probably been realized that we've probably put hold a bit too reliant on takeouts and things like that. So actually going back to kind of cooking what's in the house and things like that. Uh, could be quite a nice thing, uh, quite a nice skill to come out of all of this with. And like I say, lots of on online tutorials in that, uh, in that respect. Last and finally then, uh, is scheduling a reasonable time to go to sleep and to wake up, uh, especially if people have been uh, not going to work currently or working from home. It's kind of reinstilling maybe some of those schedules, uh, those uh, routines and things like that, because uh, they're massively important. Uh, practicing good routines, we uh, get into... We, are, we kind of come with good, relatively good uh, sleep routines as children, and then we force ourselves out of the habit of it. So things like uh, having a bath, oil, um, essential oils in a bath, that can, you know, things that are just gonna help relax you. Um, and getting a good sleep routine uh, back into play is definitely worth doing. Like we say, it's massively detrimental with uh, rubbish night sleep, and we all know what that feels like. Um, we are crabby little creatures after a rubbish night's sleep, I'm sure all of us. So that really wraps up that section in terms of kind of some hints and tips for making sure that you're looking, at, looking after you, uh, contact with others, exercise, nutrition, and sleep. That was Jay Guardia presenting on mental well-being and coping with social distancing. You'll find a link to all the resources and contacts mentioned on the webpage below this video including local support available, reputable sources for coronavirus news and emergency contacts if you or someone you know is in crisis. Now, another of the Leeds Mind trainers, Paul Croston, will walk us through things that we can control and things that we can't, as this can help with our mental health by focusing our energies. So. There's lots of things which are going on at the moment which, which we cannot control. And how do we decide what we can and can't control and then the impact that can have on us as well. Sometimes we can get really, really stressed and really, really upset or angry or, or frustrated 
for other things that we cannot control. So it's important to acknowledge that we feel stressed, but it's also uh, important to make sure that how, do, how can we reframe that? So there's things we cannot control, we can generally not make any difference to as well. So if other people are or are not following social distancing rules, we cannot control that. That's the actions of other people in, in whatever way. We cannot control other people's actions. So we can feel stressed and uh, anxious around it and angry, frustrated and upset and lots of different things, but we cannot control that so actions of others. So it's how, how do we frame that? How do we let that go? Again, that's a skill we can use. Predicting what will happen. We're in really, really uncharted borders, so there is no real sort of clear guidelines what's going to happen and when. How other people will react to this situation. Everybody's reacting differently. We cannot control how other people react to how other people think and feel. We can only can acknowledge our own thoughts and our own feelings. Can't control the amount of toilet paper in the shops as well. Things like that. We don't have any control over that. And certainly won't have any control how long this will last. We have some sort of potentials of what things might start to look like hopefully fairly soon. We, we cannot control that as well. So the things we can focus on is the things I can control, the things you can control. So we can control to, to apply our positive attitude, our thoughts and our feelings. Turning off the news. It's important obviously we keep updated, but also there's a line somewhere. If we constantly have the news on, it's constantly telling us it's bad news, it's negativity, it's this, it's that. Yeah, making sure there's a line somewhere that we're updated and I've, I've had enough under my news input today, I'm turning it off. Yeah. Social media and the connectivity is fantastic, like we talked about, but also as a, again, there's a line somewhere. So making sure we're just limiting our social media time and knowing what that is for us, for ourselves. Uh, everybody's slightly different, but just knowing what that is and just thinking we can build that into our day. That, you know, this is what time I'm, I'm turning this off and what time I'm turning it on or how long we want to spend on something each day. Uh, again, finding some creative and fun things we can do at home. That's things we can control. Sometimes the simplest things are sort of the best and funniest. Uh, controlling our own social distancing, that's what we can control. And our own kindness and compassion for other people we might be living with or our neighbourhood and society at large. These are the things we can control and we can focus on. Thanks to both Jay and Paul for lending their expertise to this webinar. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in touch via our social media channels or via email. The address is info at leadsmind.org.uk. Thank you for watching.